when you initiate a conversation with someone about all the exciting, impressive science coming out of the Human Genome Project, the terminology can be off-putting in its complexity. The applications can seem distant and abstract. And by the time you say words like biostatistics, let alone copy number variation, most people have checked out of the conversation entirely. So today, I'm going to talk about some of the non-medical applications coming out of the genomics revolution. And then I'm going to tell you why it's more than just a novelty to cultivate some of these applications on the, shall we say, entertainment side of DNA science. And I'm going to do it by giving you a demonstration. So, no doubt you're all aware of the game, the six degrees of separation, the game that looks at any two individuals and attempts to map a path pairwise between them, looking at pairs of individuals who are friends. So uh, I'm going to play the game in a slightly different configuration. I'm going to try and connect any two individuals. Uh, but instead of looking at pairs of friends, I'm going to look at pairs of relatives. So individuals who are definitively close cousins though perhaps long lost cousins beyond where the paper trail has left off. And to do this, I'm going to access some of the sophisticated uh, mathematical and biological computation tools that we've developed as part of a relative finder feature that we have at 23andMe. So since this analysis is really a celebration of family, quite literally, and since the holidays are rapidly approaching, I'm going to start the analysis by putting at the center of my uh, of my analysis, holiday hostess uh, extraordinaire, Martha Stewart. So it turns out that uh, on the other side, I'm going to put uh, uh, health advocate, surgeon, and uh, television host, Dr. Mehmet Oz. So between these two individuals, there is an individual, a male, 30-something, living in Oakland, California, who shares so much distinctively identical DNA with Martha Stewart that he is absolutely a cousin of hers. And at the same time, he shares separately so much distinctively identical overlapping DNA with Mehmet Oz that he is definitively a close but long-lost cousin of Mehmet Oz's as well. So whether he is genetically predisposed to being a uh, multimedia mogul remains for a different discussion, but certainly it's interesting to see that in a single individual. If I go a different direction, there is a woman with Ukrainian ancestry living in De Detroit, Michigan, who is a close but long-lost cousin of Martha Stewart's. She simultaneously is a close but long-lost cousin of Olympic gold medalist Sarah Teeting. If I make another cousin hop, through Sarah to a woman with German and Native American ancestry living in the Midwest with significant identical uh, cousin indicating a, a DNA with Sarah. That woman also is a cousin of Dr. Carrie Mullis, Nobel Prize winner, uh, TED Med uh, participant and uh, inventor of PCR. And if I go another direction through a woman born in the 1930s with Native American Chippewa ancestry, uh, who is a close but long-lost cousin of Martha Stewart's, I can then connect into this extended family tree, Daniel Kraft, who presented here ahead of me, who is also a close but long-lost cousin of hers. So it's cool. It's surprising. It's interesting to think about having a big chunk of your DNA identical to, on the one hand, an Olympic gold medalist, and on the other hand, a Nobel Prize winner. And the magic is that encoded in the DNA of all of us are these stories about our histories and our ancestors, our origins, and our connectedness. And we have the tools now to spit in a little tube and discover those stories. And so, although Martha Stewart has probably innovated more novel additions to holiday tradition than anyone on Earth, I would suggest that uh, setting a holiday invitation list based on your extended genetic family tree is probably one she hasn't innovative yet. And yet, I'd suggest it could be one of the most profound things one could do to see your connections with other people beyond those that you know. So you might also be saying, we are here at TED Med, and I thought the reason that billions of dollars were being invested into genomics was so that we could find cures, so that we could usher in this new age of personalized medicine. 
Well, here's the point. If we can make DNA accessible to the consumer, if we can take it from being this opaque, inaccessible province of the scientific elite and make it something that you can have a conversation with someone, your friends and family around the dinner table, more people want to be genotyped. When more people are genotyped, they explore their own DNA in a way that's totally different than a simple set of letters or uh, publications that they read. It becomes very personal and very actionable. And when we have a lot of people genotyped, that collective of individuals, that set of, of people, that crowd of citizen scientists can suddenly do things to advance breakthroughs that traditional research methodologies haven't been able to do. So at the end of the day, empowering individuals and inspiring them in as many ways as we can to see the molecular magic that comprises them, to see the ways that their DNA can both illuminate their histories while brightening their futures, that's really the big idea that we're trying to bring to medical innovation. Thank you.